welcome to the artistic process, where we will go from marking it to making it. Let myself, Julia Tripoli, dance teacher, artist, studio owner, and motivator, help guide you with advice direct from industry leaders. From the creative process to the final production, from auditions to credits, I will take you through the ins and outs of maximizing your art, all while putting the artist first. This week is an introduction to the artist in the road less traveled. This episode is brought to you by Movement Apparel. Street style sportswear inspired by dancers. Local, affordable, colorful. Founded by a dance lover and mom, it is a brand built with love. All natural, eco-friendly, and antibacterial. Movement Apparel is currently donating 5% of each sale to La Fondation des Artistes, an artist foundation in order to give back to our community during this time of COVID-19. Please visit movementapparel.ca using my discount code, I am an artist, for 15% off. I am proudly moving forward with Movement Apparel. Why am I here? The simple answer is Roy and the Dance Plug made me an offer to host my own podcast. Now, how about the not so simple answer? Why was I offered my own podcast? Well, pandemic and pivot, Rona and redirection. I began doing Instagram lives every Monday at 11 a.m. full of information and inspiration for artists. Important topics with valued guests, and I coined the phrase, stay home, stay safe, stay inspired. The first episode was a bunch of everything. We realized that saying thank you is cool. We talked about loyalty in the dance community and the concept that the grass is always greener on the other side. Mm -mm. It's green where you water it. And also realizing sometimes that the grass is just fake. Second episode brought upon some guests and we talked about the pressures of social media. Seeing as now during quarantine, all of the dance classes have been put online. A lot of dancers started to feel like they had to be dancing all day, every day. They had to be online all day, every day. But the key to dancer growth is balance. And sometimes taking yourself away from a screen to draw inspiration elsewhere. Dancer Girls led to building the next generation. And I had two guests for episode three, Sarah Stebbin, who has her own program by the name of Moving Beyond, and Vanessa Gagno, the owner of Studio Unified Movement. We spoke about how training is not just about the body, it's also about the mind. Having an accountability buddy is important as well. As we move forward with dancer growth, understanding who we are and helping the next generation, we realized how tough that question can be. Who are we really? I wanted for episode four to bring on someone who could talk about breaking the mold and being genuine and unique and authentic. That perfect human was Neil Schwartz. And he said, real recognizes real. So we need to do our best in this life to be our real authentic selves. Then that translates to how can we make that real authentic self show up through a screen? How do we show on social media who we really are? Episode five, I brought in my sister, Emma, who talked about all things social media. She is the COO of Girls Living Well and KGMTL. And she spoke to us about branding, about investing in yourself and understanding your purpose when you post. Now, a lot of us second guess what we post. So I tried to think, what can I do? What can I say? Who can I bring on that would help us with that? help us with discovering who we are and being unapologetic for it. That road is difficult, but a perfect example of it is Catherine Garbarino of KGMTL. She spoke about trial and error, making those mistakes, learning and growing from them, being true to yourself, but always remembering to live in the moment. Coming on to week seven, episode seven, I wanted to flip the perspective a bit and speak to a younger generation in the dance community to see how they're doing and dealing with the new version of online classes. So I spoke to Mike and Kevin of Flow Excess. They have an amazing motto, which is no challenge, no change. And I wanted to know if they were still able to uphold that during quarantine. They had a lot of great tips, a lot of great advice. 
We also realize that our bodies are moving differently at this time, whether it be more, whether it be less, whether it be the same amount, but just slightly different due to the environment we're in. And we have to remember to self-care, stretch, breathe, work on our bodies internally and externally. Self-care is important. We also kind of touched upon this notion of fear, of thinking this quarantine is going to have all of us go downhill in our growth. It would have the opposite effect of all the work we've been putting in pre-quarantine, let's say. And I remember a great quote from my favorite film, Coach Carter, which is, our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. And I thought, maybe your fear is not that we're not going to be good enough when we get out of this. Maybe our fear is that we are going to be so amazing because we have the time now to truly work on ourselves. That takes a deep breath in and a deep breath out. Coming up to episode eight with Kim Jengra about learning to let go. We spoke about having no fear, setting yourself free, taking that chance and being present. All of this touched upon the importance of abolishing the stigma of mental health. Coming on episode nine, redirection was a huge factor in so many people's quarantine that we wanted to actually talk about it and bring that to light. Sarah Stebbin came on once again and talked about those key moments, about understanding that we can't control everything, but maybe we can control our actions and reactions. And when you're faced with a redirection, don't fight it. Understand why it's coming to you and turn those negatives into positives. That being said, we changed the word quarantine to cocoon. The next episode was entitled The Unreality Industry with Raman Belkebish. And we talked about the myth of being famous, that it should be about self-growth and not followers. He kind of let everybody know that some of us are out here for the wrong reasons and that we need to change our mindset. Have a circle of good people around you that you trust, that you can confide in, and then can help push you to be the best person you can be. We also made a few sports analogies being basketball fans, and I decided that I'm going to start every day like the game is at 0-0, and we fight every day for that big win. Episode 11 was a slight shift. We had Live and Unplugged with Roy, and we spoke about support, being supportive, netiquette, money talks, all of the things happening in the dance world that are still happening even though we are in cocoon mode. Lastly, before this podcast, I spoke with Mel Charlot, and it was an insightful, open and honest discussion about the injustice happening towards people of color, women of color in our dance community, what it is that we can do to evoke change and what our responsibilities are at this moment as artists. Even though these subjects have already been touched upon, I will be using this podcast to go deeper and further, revisiting, re-inviting, reinvesting, reinventing. Also bringing forth new topics and even panel discussions. I want to bring you all the important subjects, perhaps certain ones you didn't even realize were important. I want this podcast to inspire you, to bring you joy, and to open your eyes and minds to new possibilities. I want to be honest. I want you all to hear the truth, sugar-free, gluten-free. I am vowing to use this podcast to shed light on what matters, to educate and to have you all realize how wildly capable you all are of being incredible humans. It is time now for us to work on being better humans. I am vowing to use my voice, a voice I haven't always been as confident using. Why would anyone even listen to me? My name is Julia a.k.a. Mama G. I am a dance teacher, studio owner, agency director, adjudicator, motivator. I have spent the last nine years growing and expanding my home, Tripoli Studios. I am honored to have personally built this home 
once and then a second time when we expanded with the help of my amazing father and many other key humans. Tripoli Studios is a place where there are no outsiders, a place where all are welcome to be uniquely themselves. I have helped agency members grow and flourish, help teachers find their own voices, and help students finally feel at ease coming to dance. All of this, of course, with the assistance of the best dream team a gal could ask for. I have taught and traveled all over the world, but always happy to bring these experiences back to my home, back to Tripoli Studios and my E3 family. Now, I've always had the question of why I named it what I named it. And to be perfectly honest, when I started, I had no idea what I was going to call the studio. But a good friend of mine asked me, let's start here. What do you stand for? And I said, being kind. So to me, that was elegance, handling situations with kindness and elegance. Having a thick skin as a dancer, working hard, endurance, and striving for perfection, but understanding that we are not perfect and that is okay. Elegance, endurance, excellence. Three E's, triple E, E3. All of this to also say that if you put an E and a three face to face, it kind of looks like a butterfly. And the butterfly is actually my spirit creature because of one major quote. Just when the caterpillar thought the world was over, it became a butterfly. And just when I thought my world was over, I found a new purpose. Why did I feel the need to create this home and this family? I myself have never really felt at home in the dance community. I felt like I couldn't be myself. Feelings of not being good enough, the wrong look, the wrong size, the wrong hair color. Now, don't get me wrong. I developed that thick skin that we all need after much struggle. (laughs) And I have many incredible dance experiences from China to Vegas, BET's 106 in Park to the MMBA's TV, film, and stages all across the world. No matter how great the moment was, though, I still wasn't home. And I was starting to notice so many other dancers feeling the same way. And it's hard enough once we make that decision to be an artist that we should at least be able to have somewhere to go where we feel... We can be our genuine selves and we feel we can be safe. Now, why did I feel like the right road was so wrong? I think we all have that debate at some point. Dance or school? Abstract and uncertainty or structure and monetary security? Basically, constant unemployment or a nine to five. Ultimately, what it boiled down to for me was this. Joy versus everything else. There is sometimes this weird preemptive notion that artists became artists because they weren't great at school. I was a total nerd. (laughs) Academic plus, debate team, student council, valedictorian, twice. But also super into sports. Captain of the soccer team, national water polo player, winner of the Terry Fox Award. And also, also love the arts. I was in the drama club, national improv champion, played the drums and band, and was a soloist in the choir. Now, my parents were always super supportive, but definitely leaned more towards that whole getting a degree side, aka the right road. I was good in school. I was curious, still am, and I questioned everything. I loved watching Matlock with my father. Some of you might be too young to know what Matlock was, but it was an amazing lawyer show. I love the law and journalism, and at the age of 16 years old, I was the youngest ever admitted to police technology at John Abbott. 
And then dance really showed up and threw me the biggest curveball of my life at the age of 17. I had high hopes of becoming a criminal investigator and I wanted to change the world. Why did I feel such a burden for greatness? That one is easy. My Nana. The kindest, most wonderful woman I have ever known who, much like my mother, puts others first. She was quite literally able to walk down a street, see a homeless person, and take off her coat right then and there and give it to them without even batting an eye. She effortlessly cared for her own ailing mother, my great-grandmother, along with my grandfather who suffered from Parkinson's while, of course, taking care of me. She showed me humanity could be ultimately good and that kindness prevails. She showed me that my spirit creature was a butterfly and I have my mom to thank for my wings. Something I loved was she would always send me the quote of the day from the Gazette. This is when newspapers were made of paper. <laughs> and this quote is one that will forever stay with me. I was in Las Vegas and having a bit of a tough time navigating my career. She sent me this quote and everything changed. Beyond talent lie all the usual words. Love, luck, discipline, but most of all endurance. I tattooed that on my foot because we all know dancers need our feet and it's become one of the major staples of my life and my studio. She introduced me to ballet, the nutcracker, and ultimately my love for dance. She believed in me since day one, since the day I was born, September 8th, 1984. We've gone from now to then, and I have spent a good part of my 36 years taking the road less traveled, and I have zero regrets, not a single letter. Whatever I've been through has brought me to now, and I wanna be the best human I can be. And you know what? I want that for you too. Let's discover who we really are. Let's be kind and genuine and powerful. Let's be artists. So that is why I am here. But why are you here? Whether you are just starting, paused at a crossroads, or even looking to double back, allow myself and this podcast to be your guide through the artistic process.